Welcome back from the weekend. Isn't it lovely to be here? I'm your host, Benis Abubedu. Welcome to Joy News Interactive on the Joy News channel on Multi TV. We are also live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. We'll be taking you uh, shortly to the Public Accounts Committee sitting in Parliament. But first, let's connect on some issues because I'm eager to do so. Send in your comments on our Facebook page. Joy News on TV. Let's start with this because it's been trending since Saturday. He said he wanted to be remembered as unbeatable and unstoppable. Could the swift turn of events at the London Stadium have changed that? Well, the unbeatable Usain Bolt was beaten as he lost the 100 meters world championship title to the USA's Justin Gatling at the World Athletics Championship in London. Call it his final global individual race, but he's definitely warming up for next week's 4 by 100 meter relay. Some of you think it's not over for the athlete until it's over, uh, but do you think both will come back for gold in the 4 by 100 meters relay? And to think of it, what do you think led to his loss in the 100 meter race. Let's take a look at this. I'll come back to take your comments. And Christian Coleman. Well, it's a clean start. It's a good start by Coleman. The Americans flying in lane number five. It's the American leading the Jamaican at the moment. But on the outside in lane number eight. Gatlin, who was the last man to beat Bolt over 100 meters in Rome in 2013, claimed the world title from lane eight in 9.92. Coleman took the silver while well, it was bronze for Bolt. Zambini finished a credible fifth in 10.01. The ultimate showman will now look to help Jamaica win gold in the 4x100 meters relay on Saturday. There's a lot to say about that particular race because a lot of people have commended Gatling for his show of sportsmanship. And that photo actually is trending, the one of uh, Gatling, you know, bowing down to Usain Bolt. But uh, other people are commenting about the way uh, the, 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 the spectators treated him because Justin was actually booed when he uh, came up to receive his gold medal. But let's put some of your comments there on Facebook. Bayer Jeremiah says, Justin Gatling did his homework well and came out victorious since both winners and losers make history. Usain Bolt was overconfident, okay? That's what Bayer thinks. Uh, he undermined the capabilities of his opponents. That led to his defeat. Says, I wish him well. Emmanuel Azrak by Adam says, I believe this is a game... Uh, that could favor anyone since all of them have trained in, in trained enough but for you saying full to be third i would conclude that maybe old age just set in or overconfident uh, well abode ibrahim says yes he can he has to prepare extra in order to redeem it and he's talking about the four by hundred uh, relay race that's yet to uh, come up and he says it is unfortunate this came at the last minute of his career he should have retired uh, as title holder. Desmond O'Clay says, no, he can't. He lost because he wasn't consistent with his training. He thought he was in a comfortable lead. Interesting. I don't know where Desmond is getting his facts from about you say not being consistent with his training. But okay, this is peculiar to Ghana. Some have also argued that this particular comfortable lead phrase, together with his famous Usain Bolt, uh, 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 you know, that thing he does when he wins, probably has some link. You know what I'm talking about. This is very peculiar to Ghana. And uh, Frank for TV says, change has come and it's happening all over the world. So to me, it's not a surprise. I think complacency also led to uh, that. Atukwamana Blakwa says, I really don't think so because all his rivals are on point. Interesting. So we wait to see what comes up in the 4x100. But obviously we know in that particular 100 meter final, first and second positions were taken by US athletes, third and fourth were taken by a Jamaican athletes. So would it be a reverse in the 4x100? Uh, let's wait to see. Fingers crossed. Apana Chow says, oh, why not? Even Gatling and uh, and Bolt on that race was a very tight one. Emeritus Mark Anthony and Saribuachi says the battle is the Lord's. And Oba very much, very much says, I think he's getting 
old. So while well, a lot of your comments coming in, quite a number of people are not enthused about the way, like I mentioned, uh, spectators treated him. And uh, it's interesting that Gatling's, uh, you know, doping history is coming to play in all of this and people think he's not a true champion and all that. But hey, even if Gatling was not in this race, Bolt couldn't still have me first because he was third. And so I think that, that that line of argument is quite flawed. But let's move on. The central regional town of Dentro Boasi made headlines a couple of months ago following the lynching of uh, late Major Maxwell Adam Mahama uh, in that particular town in May this year. Now, as part of the president's tour of the western and central regions, he is expected to visit Dentro Boasi in the central region today at, at, at 2.30 uh, about that time, uh, according to his itinerary. Now, most people are looking forward to the visit, especially with the you know, following the disheartening incident that made the town quite unpopular. Well, President will make a brief stopover at the Trobwasi, like I mentioned, before attending a derby organized by the chiefs and people of Wasa Ikrupong later in the day. What do you make of the President's decision to visit the Trobwasi? Let's get onto Facebook and hear what you have to say. And uh, Kweku Varden says, a good move by the President, they will be privileged to pass their remorse and regret to the president to the entire country and also address their concerns about development to government, we should commend the president for this move, okay? And uh, Sharif Ali says it's important for him to go back. He shouldn't go for going's sake. He should make sure all those involved in the death of Major Mahama are severely punished and given longer jail years, okay? Like the president always says, the rule of law must work. Emmanuel Azragbe Adam says, I expect the president's visit to the place uh, to give a new beginning to residents and change their attitude completely, though there is um, an indelible mark which would uh, be remembered for years. Uh, Bayer Jeremiah says, the president's visit is to reintegrate the people of the town uh, to the country and also give them hope and assurance that despite the unfortunate incident, they will still get their share of the national cake. Okay, you think that's what he's going to do? You think he's also going to encourage residents to give the police all the information and the people involved leading to the death of Major Mahama? And uh, you're also, okay, well, you think the president is just going to ensure that uh, the rule of law uh, works okay. Nanaya Prabuno says, Mr. President, please take the Entropoise out from your program because John Hughes wants you to tell you you don't even know what you're doing. Interesting. Okay. So Nanaya comments here and says, Sometimes I don't understand how some media house of journalists ask, ask questions. This question you have brought on board, uh, okay. He thinks that question is irrelevant, but you know, um, Nanaya Opra, the president doesn't visit every single town, and we know how important this town is because of what happened, obviously. So, uh, we're just asking you what you think should be brought to the president's attention, even as he visits uh, the place. Don Shata says there are still innocent people in Dentroboise, so he should visit Hayford Deck. Um, well, nobody is saying anything is wrong. I think there's a bit of misunderstanding, Hayford. Uh, well, we are not saying the president shouldn't visit the place. Kojo Bene says, I heard he'll be meeting. Uh, okay, Desmond, Kojo Bene, we cannot uh, verify your claim, so we'll just skip. Desmond Oakley says, it's good he's going there. Uh, okay, he thinks that the president should tell them how, um, how they were not too smart in lynching uh, Major Mahama. Waves Kate Debson says, I expect him to cut the sword <laughs> for the relocation of Joy News. Okay. Since we give credible and accurate news, and you, are, you, are, you know you're being mischievous, right? That's why you're laughing at your own comments. It's fine. About 10, Noah Bete says, it will help him to know what actually uh, brought out a barbaric act. Um, Method to Major Mahama. Okay, Maritis Mark Anthony as I watch it says, Well, it's in the right direction. God bless our president. Antonio Benjamin Sharif says, What do you expect us to make of it? Um, or is Joy FM expecting us to clap hands for a president? Interesting. Okay, Ephraim Agbovi says, Well, he has the right to do so since they're also part of the country. We wish them well. And uh, Okay, Bernard Kwashi thinks that the president's decision to visit Dentro is perfect. 
Uh, nothing wrong with him going there. Uh, he should commiserate with the innocent. Um, okay, in this case, that's part two uh, of Major Mahama. And uh, John for Abdul Latif says it's um, a good move by the president. You're watching John News Interactive with me, Benis Abu Bedu. When we come back, you're going to be talking about fake drugs and how well you're able to identify them and uh, whether you think the FDA uh, is doing a good job. Please don't go away. We'll be right back. <laughs> Thank you for staying here on Joy News Interactive. Now, before we talk about unwholesome and fake drugs, uh, this particular weekend was quite an interesting one, apart from uh, Usain Bolt losing to Justin Gatling. And there was another big one, I mean, in the sports and well, had to do with the Community Shield. And I'm sure by now you know that Arsenal beat Chelsea by 4-1 penalty shootout. Now I watched that match and I don't know what happened to Chelsea. Chelsea fans, please come and explain what's happening to your team because Arsenal beat you in the close of last season and they beat you now as we begin this particular season. It's, it's interesting because we know last season Arsenal wasn't doing too well, especially with the fans calling for Asin Wenger to go and all that. And then he won the FA Cup. Now he's won the Community Shield. But what intrigued me most was, uh, you know, the new style of penalty, you know, shootout. And I'm sure you're also wondering why I was like that, but it's a new rule. And I'm sure as we go on, we will, we'll, you know, get along with the new uh, system. But here are some highlights from that game. Wembley was a sea of blue and red on Sunday as the English Premier League champions Chelsea and Arsenal, last season's FA Cup winners, clashed in the Community Shield to signal the start of the much-anticipated 2017-18 Premier League season. Arsene Wenger, in his 20th game in charge of Arsenal at Wembley, left Alexis Sanchez, Mesut Ozil and Aaron Ramsey out of the matchday squad to protect them from injury and fatigue. The Gunners, looking to extend their record club winning run at the ground to eight consecutive games, made a bright start to the encounter. Alex Iwobi skipped past David Luiz and put a ball into the box, only for it to come off like a Z's arm before going wide. The 13-time Community Shield champions continued to press forward, and barely a minute later, it was Danny Welbeck's turn to show intent. The Blues began to find their rhythm as the match progressed, but the major threat still came from Arsenal. Lacazette was unlucky not to open his goal-scoring account after his strike had beaten Thibaut Courtois. Peter Cech started becoming busier as the Blues worked the keeper more often, but the scores remained goalless into the halftime break. That momentum saw the league champions get their second half to the best possible start as Victor Moses made amends for his sending off in the FA Cup final 10 weeks ago, a minute into the half. But the Gunners set out to draw level immediately after that. They came close to doing so in the 59th minute, but on any swerving shot was kept out by Courtois. Arsenal, who have not lost at Wembley since the 2010-11 League Cup final, continued their assault on Chelsea's goal. They were given the upper hand when Chelsea's Pedro saw red for a dangerous tackle on El Nenny that gave the Gunners the perfect chance to restore parity. Yeah, Arsenal back on level terms. It has done. And it's... Kolasinac, who knocked it in at the far post. Suddenly it's all gone pear-shaped for Chelsea. 1-1 at Wembley. That resulted in the match ending in a one-all draw after 95 minutes of exciting football to send the game straight into the penalty shootout. Chelsea skipper Gary Cahill and Arsenal's Theo Walcott slotted their opening penalties before Nacho Monreal gave the Gunners a 2-1 lead in the shootout. Koto was next to step up to the penalty spot and the keeper sent his kick over the bar. It went from bad to worse for the Blues as new signing Alvaro Morata drilled his penalty wide. Arsenal needed to score their next two penalty kicks to claim the trophy 4-1 on penalties and the Gunners made no mistake. And there it is! Arsenal have done it to Chelsea again. They've won their third community shield in four seasons. And the champions beaten by the FA Cup winners for a fourth time in a row. Don't ask me what Thibaut was doing. I don't know what he was doing. I think there was so much excitement uh, because he actually took the second penalty shoot for Chelsea and he sent it way over the bar. Probably, I don't know, maybe he thought he was 
uh, taking a goal kick or something. But we asked you on Facebook, is this the beginning of good things to come for us now this season? And some interesting uh, response, responses we have here on Facebook. Otre Inox says, never. He thinks it's not the beginning of good things for us now. He says, in the history of the Community Shield, no team has won the trophy and won the EPL the same year. So us now will suffer this season. And Pakujo says, what is a significant trophy to us now? He's asking, any trophy more than the Emirate Cup is not needed by us now. So please forget about us now winning any more trophies. Their destiny is tied to the Emirates Cup. And Akosia Asnal, I love this. You must be a true fan. Her name is Akosia Asnal. And she says, we win everything winnable. Interesting. Atukwam now, Blackwa says, Aputo, okay. Uh, he says, for where? And Kojo Esifua says, yes, starting the season on a good note. And so, uh, well, Kojo Esifua thinks that this is actually a sign of good things to come. And uh, let's see what happens with us now, because uh, I, I, at least I followed, followed the EPL for some time now, though I'm not an EPL girl, I'm a La Liga girl. And so uh, the big one is coming tomorrow, don't forget, the Super Cup, Manchester United versus Real Madrid. I cannot wait uh, for my team to do it again because we won the La Liga last season and we won the UEFA Champions League. So this is just time to just seal the lips of our enemies. Anyway, away from that, uh, we'll be taking you live to Parliament where the Public Accounts Committee is holding a public hearing to discuss some issues of concern. Now, one major issue which has been out for a while is the matter of financial infraction by state-owned companies, including the Food and Drugs Authority. Now, before we take it to Parliament, uh, let's discuss the FDA at the moment due to its direct link to health. We know there are counterfeit and unwholesome drugs on the market, despite the Food and Drugs Authority uh, role to check and ensure that drugs meet the right standards and are of high quality. Now, what do you look out for when you're buying drugs to be sure what you're buying is wholesome? And Emmanuel Azdragwe says, this is really a big issue, but I believe the FDA is rather incompetent to some extent because we see a lot of fake drugs on the market. Uh, he thinks that are certified by the FDA. I wish you could probably show us a drug you bought or a drug someone you know bought that was certified by the FDA, but uh, turned out to be fake or counterfeit. Then I'm sure your allegations will stand. Chrissy Antoine Quidger says, I'd rather die than take the so-called wholesome drug when doctors and nurses are doing trial and error with our lives i only drink one gallon of water interesting uh, it tells you how uh, to what extent he doesn't trust drugs on the market baba dean hussein says corruption is what is killing our country every year guardians are disappointed in your competence i don't know if you're being sarcastic or you meant to type incompetence hassan dida says we have more serious issues than what you guys are talking about. Let's tackle bribery and corruption first in the public sector, Hassan. Uh, what may be serious to you may not be serious to another. What may be serious to another may not be serious to you. They're talking about healthy and for some people it's a big deal because they have to go to the pharmacy every day and purchase one drug or the other. So yeah, I get your point. But uh, well, Papa Ines Apusiga says, how many resident pharmacists are in our pharmacies? He thinks that most pharmacies have SHS graduates manning them. Okay, we don't have any proof to that, Papa, but I'm sure you may have experienced that. Frank TV says, I always check out for the expiry date and check the FDB's website to know whether it's a registered product. Now, that's a good one. Frank is sharing his tip here. You can't go into the FD, uh, FDA. You actually mean it's the Food and Drug Authority's move from a board. So, uh, Food and Drug Authority, uh, Authority's website to know whether what you're buying or what you're taking is a registered product. Ato Kwamina Blakwa says the manufacturer, he means that uh, he checks for the manufacturer, uh, the company's name, as well as the expiry date and the manufacturing date uh, to be sure what he's taking is wholesome. Hafiz Ibn Ali says he always considers two things after buying or when buying products, and that's the expiry date and where the product is manufactured. Uh, so that's a big deal uh, for him. But uh, Pak is actually going to 
be hearing some health officials uh, this later today and we'll bring you that when uh, the committee is ready to sit and um, that's because the uh, auditor general's report uh, suggested that the FDA, FDA has, not be too, has not been too effective in uh, ensuring that drugs in the market are wholesome and hence the question we are talking about here. We definitely will bring you that sitting when uh, PAC is ready and that'll be all for this edition of Joy News Interactive. My name is Venice Abubedu. It's always a pleasure to hear what you have to say about trending subjects. Don't forget, we are still interactive. Get onto our Facebook page, Joy News on TV. Also, visit us on Twitter, our name, is joining us on TV. My name is Ben Sabubedo. I'll be back at 12 with more news updates. Take care.